for today's lesson, we will be discussing about exponential and logarithmic inequality. So last time, we discussed about exponential and logarithmic equations. So this time, we will be dealing with inequalities and we still have to identify the solutions of the following inequalities. So what is an exponential inequality? An exponential inequality is an inequality involving exponential expressions. So it's like your exponential equations, but we're just changing the symbols. So for example, 2 raised to x plus 1 is greater than 8. Another example, 3 raised to 3x minus 4 is less than or equal to 5. So these are examples of exponential inequalities. So as long as there's a variable in the exponent of our expressions. For logarithmic inequality, so it is an inequality that involves logarithms. So we have here, for example, logarithm of x plus 1 base 2 is less than um, 5. Logarithm of 3x base 3 is greater than or equal to 4. So these are examples of logarithmic inequality. So it's like your logarithmic equations, but again, it involves um, inequality symbols. Now in solving for the solutions of our logarithmic and exponential inequality, we have to take note of some properties. So b raised to x is greater than b raised to y if and only if x is greater than y and b raised to x is less than b raised to y if and only if x is less than y. So it's like your one-to-one -one property but we're just changing the symbol to inequality symbols. So an example would be, let's say 2 raised to x plus 1 is greater than 2 raised to 3. So since the bases here are the same, so you can get their exponents and apply the same uh, inequality. So this will be x plus 1 is greater than 3. So that is how you will apply this given property here. So for logarithmic inequalities, so you can solve by using the fact that logarithm of y base b is greater than x is the same as y is greater than b raised to x. This means you can transform the given logarithm into its exponential form before we solve. So for example, logarithm of uh, 3x plus 1 base 5 is greater than 4. This can be written as, you get the argument, so 3x plus 1 is greater than, then you have the base which is 5 raised to 4. So again, uh, this is how you rewrite the logarithmic inequalities into its exponential form. Another one is that if, let's say we have logarithm of c base b is greater than logarithm of d base b, then c is greater than d. So, if you notice, both the sides of our inequality has logarithm, and if it happens that they have the same base, what we will do is we can just get the arguments and then apply the same inequality. So, an example would be logarithm of x plus 1 base 2 is greater than logarithm of 3x plus 1 base 2. So they have the same base. So what we can do is we can get their arguments. So we have x plus 1 and then apply the same inequality which is greater than 3x plus 1. We will be taking note of this and these are the things that we will apply later on when we are already solving for the solutions of our inequality. So let's now solve for this example. 64 is less than 4 raised to 2x plus 1. So before we can apply the properties that we discussed a while ago, we have to make sure first that the bases are the same. Since we have here 64 and then the other one is 4, we can transform 64 into its exponential form wherein the base is also equal to 4. So what I will do is, we will rewrite 64 wherein its base is 4. So that will be 4 cubed less than 4 raised to 2x plus 1. Now since their bases are already the same, you can now 
say that the same inequality applies to their exponents. So we can get 3 and say that it's less than 2x plus 1 as well. And then from here, you can now solve for the solution. So you move 1 on the other side. So 3 minus 1 less than 2x. And then this will be 2 less than 2x. Divide both sides by 2. You cancel. You have 1 is less than x or this is just the same as x is greater than 1. So this is our solution now. Now if you want to write it into intervals, so what we will do is you can draw a number line. So this is the negative infinity, this is the positive infinity. And then you locate where is 1 in our number line. So 1 is probably here. And then identify um, what are the values of x that are greater than 1. So take note, this is a number line. So let's mark this as a circle with circle. But I'm not shading the inside of a circle because the symbol that we have here is greater than. That means it's not part of our solution. So a hollow circle and then since x should be greater than 1, that means the numbers should be higher than 1 or those are the numbers on the right side of 1. So that means it approaches to positive infinity. With that, we can say that the solution is from 1 up to positive infinity, but not included. Or 1 is not included because x should be greater than 1, so higher than 1. That is just our boundary. So your answer can be x greater than 1 or this notation, which is from 1, not included, up to positive infinity. So that is how you solve for the solutions of exponential inequalities. Let's have another example, 9 raised to 2 minus x greater than or equal to 27. Now again, our goal is to make our basis the same. But since the base here is 9, we have to transform 27 into its exponential form wherein the base is 9. But that is impossible because if you square 9, we will get 81, which is already greater than 27. So it's impossible for us to write 27 uh, into its exponential form wherein the base is 9. So what we will do is, we will be manipulating both sides of the equation. So you have to identify what number are we going to use as the base so that we can both get 9 and 27 if we raise it to a certain number. So that will be 3. So we can use 3 as the base. So that means we have to rewrite 9 and 27 into its exponential form, wherein the base is 3. So 9 can be written as 3 squared. Then we still have the 2 minus x here, greater than or equal to. Then 27 can be written as 3 cubed. So as you can see, both of now, uh, both expressions, they now have the same base, which is 3. So before we can get their exponents, we have to simplify this one first. So how are we going to simplify it? You will multiply the exponents. So that will be 3 raised to 2 times 2 is 4 minus 2 times x is 2x. And that will be greater than or equal to 3 cubed. Now we can get their exponents and apply the same inequality. So 4 minus 2x is greater than or equal to 3. And then let's solve for x. So negative 2x greater than or equal to 3 minus 4. So negative 2x greater than or equal to 3 minus 4 is negative 1. And then divide both sides by negative 2. So x now, since we divide by negative number, so the symbol will flip. So this will be x is less than or equal to. And then uh, negative 1 divided by negative 2 is positive 1 half. So we have x is less than or equal to 1 half as the solution of this inequality. Now, if we're going to write it into notation, so what we will do is, let's write again our number line. So, negative infinity to positive infinity and then locate 1 half. So, let's say 1 half is here. Then, I'm using now a shaded circle because the symbol that we have here is less than or equal. That means 1 half is included in our solution. Since it is less than 1 half, that means these are the numbers on the left side of our uh, number, which is 1 half. So therefore, it goes to negative infinity. So our solution now is from negative infinity to 1 half and then 1 half is included. So your answer can also be written like this. So now for logarithms, what we will do is uh, we have to write this into its exponential form. So remember why 
and then we have the symbol and then b raised to x so we will be following this so write this into its exponential form you write first the argument so that will be x plus one then less than i'm just copying the symbol here the base is two raised to five and then simplify this you have x plus one less than two raised to five is 32. solving this we have x is less than 31. so this is now the solution that we obtained for the value of x now if we're going to draw it into our number line so this is the negative infinity this is positive infinity and then 31 is here so since x is less than 31 that means the numbers below 31 up to negative infinity are part of it so i will be using first hollow circle because 31 is not included and then going to negative infinity now, if I get the value, let's say negative 10, if I substitute it here in our argument, so that will be logarithm of, again, negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9, base 2. If we're going to think of it, the argument now becomes a negative. If I get or if I set x as equal to negative 10. But as what we know, arguments should not be negative number. So it should be positive number or greater than zero so what we will do here is we have to exclude those values that will not satisfy the conditions for the argument now how are we going to do it you have to get now the argument which is x plus one and then solve for the values of it wherein it will be greater than zero because that's what we want we want the argument to be greater than zero or positive numbers so solving this we have x is greater than negative one so that means if the values of x are greater than negative one then our argument will be equal to a positive number so if we're going to write it here also let's say this is negative one i'm using again hollow circle since negative 1 is not included based on the symbol it's greater than negative 1 so that means the numbers on the right side of it now as you can see here there are now two graphs in our number line so that means our final solution will be the intersection of the two so this one right here so that means the only possible solution for this given logarithm is the numbers or the values of x from negative 1 up to 31 but not included so negative 1 up to 31 but not included because in this region or section these are uh, where the two conditions were satisfied wherein x should be less than 1 but it should be greater than negative 1 so it's from negative 1 to 31 not included if we're going to write it using the variable so we have x should be greater than negative 1 but should be less than 31 so this will be our final answers so again you can use this or this one to write your final answer when you are solving for the solutions of logarithms you have to consider as well the argument so these two conditions must be satisfied in order for you to identify the solution of our um, inequality and for our last example let's have logarithm of 2x plus 6 base 2 greater than or equal to logarithm of x minus 2 base 2 so as you can see both sides of our inequality have this logarithm so you just have to look at their base as you can see both of them uh the base is 2 so that means we can get their arguments and apply the same um inequality so we have now 2x plus 6 is greater than or equal to x minus 2 and then from here let's solve for x so 2x minus x is greater than or equal to then you have negative 2 minus 6 2x minus x is x greater than or equal to negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8 so this is now the first value of x that we have so x should be greater than or equal to negative 8 but again since this is logarithm we have to consider the arguments as well wherein the arguments should be greater than 0 so that's why we will still be solving 2x plus 6 greater than 0 as well as x minus 2 greater than 0 so we'll be solving this in order for us to identify the conditions that is needed for the arguments so we have here 2x greater than negative 6 divide both sides by 2 you'll get x is greater than negative 3 so that is another value of x that we have to consider later on and then this one is x is greater than 2 
So as you can see, we have here 3. x should be greater than or equal to negative 8. It should be greater than negative 3. And it should be greater than 2. Now, we have to identify um, where are these conditions will meet or where will they uh, meet one another. Because we have to consider all of these three conditions. So to identify that, we will be drawing again our number line. So you have here the negative infinity. We have the positive infinity. And then we put here now, uh, let's start with negative 8. So let's say negative 8 is here. I'm using a circle that is shaded because of the symbol used, which is greater than or equal to negative 8. Now since x should be greater than or equal to negative 8, these are the numbers on the right side of 8. So here. So that is now our x is greater than or equal to negative 8. Next is we have x is greater than negative 3. So our negative 3 is here. But this time I'm using a hollow circle because uh, negative 3 is not included in the solution. Since x is again greater than negative 3, so these are again the numbers on the right side of negative 3. And then lastly, we have x is greater than 2. So here is our 2. Then let's write here again a circle. And then going on the right side again because it's greater than 2. So the numbers on the right side of 2. Now you have to identify at which region will these three conditions will meet or will they satisfy all the conditions. So as you notice, on this part, starting from 2, the three conditions now are here. So these are the values. As you can see, the graphs are already here, all of them. So that means we will consider this region from 2 going to positive infinity as our solution. So to write it, it's 2 up to positive infinity. I'm using parenthesis for 2 because um, 2 is not included in the solution. If we're going to write it as with x, so that will be x is greater than 2. So this is now the solution of our logarithmic inequality. So you just have again to make sure to know where are these three conditions uh, meet or where are they going to intersect one another. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something about exponential and logarithmic inequalities and see you next time.